Hello everyone and welcome to Let's Play Baldur's Gate 3 Early Access. First thing to understand about Early Access is only the first act of the game is available. I don't know exactly how long the first act is, but we're going to find out. Let's start a new game. I've played this enough so far, put a few hours into it to tell you that uh, I can already tell you I love this game. And there's a lot of reasons for that. Larian has done a pretty fantastic job with this. The opening movie, the opening cutscene movie, uh, goes on for quite some time. Your character creation happens during this process. I was a little hesitant to do a let's play on this because it is early access and there are some bugs and issues and things like that, but... I thought it would also be a great job, I mean a great <clears throat> opportunity to be able to comment on what they're doing here with this game in Early Access that probably won't be released at least for another year. Right away they do some really amazing stuff with this. Giving you the Gith and the Illithids right off the bat. And this is, uh, some of these animations are really good. This is a little reminder for those of us who grew up on Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan. It's a similar situation, except it's in through the eye instead of the ear. <clears throat> but I love the work they've done on the character models and the 3D modeling here. It's fantastic. And that's the very start of the game. So then we get to create our character, which is always fun. And the origin characters are not available. Um, these are these characters. This is what they did with Divinity Original Sin 2, is they let you play the origin characters. And that was probably the best way to actually play Divinity Original Sin 2, because they had their own backstories and things like that. You can't play any of these in early access, and that's totally okay. We're going to go for race. There, there's a lot of choices here. Obviously, you can play as a gith if you want to. You can play as a dwarf, halfling, half elf, tiefling even. You can play um, with, the, with the ruddy skin there. You can play as a drow. I'm going to choose an elf. This is um, actually what my other character is. And I'm going to choose a high elf. They have dexterity plus two and, and intelligence plus one. My reason for choosing this character is because I'm going to be choosing a fighter trying to go down and be an Eldritch Knight. There are some subclasses that I have been told exist in the early access, and one of those is the Eldritch Knight, and you have to go through fighter to get it, I guess. So, All right, so when it comes to choosing a class, we're going to choose fighter. It tells you all the things you need to know about your class, your proficiencies. Second wind is a bonus action. Tell me, who do you dream of at night? So this is one of the cool things that the game does. There's a dream sequence, I assume. This will be kind of fun, making a drow. Oh my goodness. And you can choose whatever race you want this person to be, this person you dream of. I'm actually going to choose a drow, just for the heck of it. Alright, so let's venture forth. So that's the moment that they do character creation there when he sticks the little tadpole in your eye. And then we go on to a very long intro cutscene that is really quite well done. And thrusts us into this story. I know that one of the questions people have had and one of the questions that I had when Larian started showing off some of the first video footage and first screenshots was, is it going to feel like Dungeons and Dragons or is it going to feel like Divinity Original Sin? And I think that was a legitimate question. I know I certainly had it. And I think one of the reasons Larian has probably chosen to start this story with 
illithids and gith is to make it feel more like Dungeons and Dragons. These are Dungeons and Dragons characters and creatures. This is the city of Baldur's Gate. This is a very interesting sequence. And so by putting the Illithid ship up there and the Gith flying dragons, I think Larian is working very hard to let you know this isn't Divinity Original Sin. This is Faerun. This is Dungeons and Dragons. But the quality of these cinematics is really good. It makes for kind of a funny joke, actually. D&D from Game of Thrones probably wishes they had these people working on their show when they were doing it. These guys, this is great looking stuff. I thought that was a really neat trick. Some of these sequences here with the snow and the rocks and the mountains, these are incredible. This is just really, really well done. And of course we get the Millennium Falcon and TIE Fighters sequence here, which never gets old no matter how anybody implements it. So kudos to Larian for, for uh, standing on the backs of giants there with this sequence. This is fantastic. I mean, that right shot right there, right there, that shot looks like it could be out of a movie. That was just incredible. The snow and that dragon and everything. It looked like it could have been in an episode of Game of Thrones. Wow. It's just really well done. So they're putting a lot of time and effort and money right here on the screen, right up front, <laughs> to, to hook you into the game and into the story. Baldur's Gate 3. <laughs> the three spires there. That's Look at that. That's awesome. <laughs> so as the, as the start of a video game goes, I have to give them a ton of credit for that one because it was a heck of an intro. And uh, I just thought they did a great job with it. So then now we get into the game proper. And now you start to see some of the uh, 5e edition rules for Dungeons and Dragons come to life in this game. And that was one of the things I was really curious about was how are they going to implement the Dungeons and Dragons rule set? Because it is quite different from what they do. But they've actually done a bang up job with it. So Mind Flare Pod. And I'll show you some of what's some of the things you can, uh, you know, let's see, Mind Flare Dead. They give you some nice little toys to play with Dead. early on. Good. <laughs> there's a, a little restoration pod right here. This is all very nice. Nicely done. They've done a great job putting this together. These early areas here, throwing you in with the mind flares. It's, uh... So what is this little thing over here? And this is, what is this? Illithid Record. Hmm. So you can see your inventory. Everything, all the keyboard bindings are customizable, which is one of the things that I really liked. So I really dug that right up front. You can hit the Alt Devil key. Am I in the hells? You can 
use the alt key to highlight things, which is fantastic. This is all from Divinity Original Sin, the way the mechanics work. So the cool thing about this is if you've played any of the Divinity Original Sin games, this is all going to feel very familiar to you. There's an Eldritch tablet. Oh, what is that? Dark mind. A brain, in a, jar. a brain in a jar. That sounds like a. That sounds like a funny movie that I saw once with Steve Martin. A brain in a jar. Is that a Steve Martin reference joke there? So this neural apparatus. What is that? Doesn't do anything. No, but if you go over here, this one does. This is one of the really cool things that Larian does, and right off the bat, from the very beginning of the game, they're doing it here. They build games that are not just horizontal, but vertical, and I love that about their games, and it's pretty cool. I imagine there are going to be a lot of role-playing game fans who haven't actually played a Larian game, but who maybe played Dungeons and Dragons, maybe played Baldur's Gate or Icewind Dale, and, and there's probably going to be a few that aren't familiar with with Larian's style of doing things, and so I think it's going to be a real treat for them to see these uh, the vertical nature of their game worlds. So every caustic bulb. We are trapped. Yep. So let's talk to this person, Mirnath. to save us from this place. From this place you'll free us. The exposed brain quivers in expectation. Please. Before they return. They return. Who am I talking to? Man or brain? A newborn. Born new from this husk. You realize you're talking to an intellect devourer, a minion of the mind flares who abducted you. And that was an automatic roll check, which is pretty cool, but I like even later on, it's going to be cool. You're going to get to see them doing the d20 rolls on the screen. It's really neat. I like the way that they've done this to do everything possible to make it feel like Dungeons and Dragons. Okay, so you sound afraid. Why? Hmm. I think you're past the point of saving. Tell me what to do. Remove us from this body. From this case. Free us. Please. Okay, well. I have several different choices here. Based on my rules. Strength plus two. Dexterity plus three. I'm gently prize the brain from the skull. So here's the first roll. You have to beat a seven. I like this. We're all familiar with this from playing the tabletop Dungeons and Dragons. In every other game, in every other role-playing game, that role happens behind the scenes, of course. And we all understand that. Larian has taken it and put it on the screen. Lifts from the skull. But do you notice an opportunity? You could cripple the strange creature, making it more subservient should it prove a threat. Oh, I'm not going to mutilate the brain. I'll spare the creature. We are free. Our freedom is ours, friend. The creature pauses, listening. Something behind your eyes seizes in recognition. We must go to the helm. At the helm, we are needed. All right, let's go. To the helm we go. We are going to the helm. So you get a little companion here early on. You get your newborn, which is pretty cool. And there's all kinds of... I mean, this just the vertical nature of this is really neat. 
I love how Larian does this kind of stuff. And there's some other really cool stuff coming up. But anyways, to get back to that point that I wanted to make about the, the D20 rolls. What I like is... Uh, <clears throat> It's just a little thing to put that on screen like that, but what it does is it make the game feel more like Dungeons and Dragons and less like Larry and in its Divinity games. And I think they've done quite a bit over the course of this uh, building this game to to make it feel more like Dungeons and Dragons and less like their previous titles because they know they know people want Dungeons and Dragons. They want Baldur's Gate. You know, we're not going to get Minsk and Boo back, but And so they're going to build this awesome game for us, but they're going to do as much as they can to make it feel like Dungeons and Dragons. And this is one of the very first cool things that takes place way back when we had the first Baldur's Gate games. Of course, they're implementing the t the, the two edition rules and the and the two point five and three point five edition rules. And we're like, well, there's so much they can't do with the Dungeons and Dragons rules because the game engine doesn't allow it. But here, of course, the technology has gotten so much better, and Larian's like, well, how much can we really um, implement? And so, and, and so here is that jumping doesn't trigger opportunities of attack, and you can use it out of combat to do something here. And so it's really cool, and then your little companion jumps with you. It ends up being something really useful to use during combat, combat and especially because Larian likes to build these vertical game environments. So it's it's just very cool. Abomination. This is your end. So sometimes throbs and your skin tingles. Visions rush past. A dragon's wing, a silver sword, and a flash of your face seen through the strange woman's eyes. Oh. My head. What is this? You are no thrall. Blacket blesses me this day. Together, we might survive. Imps block the path forward. You will assist me in destroying them. We must reach the helm before we transform. All right, transform. We carry mind flayer parasites. Unless we escape, unless we are cleansed, our bodies and minds will be tainted and twisted. Within days, we will be geish. Mind players. I think she's an absolutely fantastically modeled and rendered character um, right off the bat. I was like, wow, I like this gift. She's really cool. Must be something we can, we can do. Until we escape. That must be our priority. All right. Who are you? Who am I? Your only chance of survival. And you mine. Though it pains me to say it. <laughs> Onward, then. The helm is the only way out of here? It is where we might gain control of the Ga'arth, the ship. Once in command, we will deal with our gay captors. Onward, then. First, we exterminate the imps. Then we find the helm and take control of the ship. They've done a really good job with the character models. I mean, look at her. Look at her eyebrows. And all that kind of stuff. They've done a, they've just done a really good job with this game. I'm really impressed. And she's a fighter. Oh, not crouch. So you can see level one fighter. It's really weird because one of the first little uh, short reviews that came out on the game was from someone who was c complaining and. Uh, and saying that you know they they wanted to play a mage and and it made them too squishy and they didn't have a fighter companion and I'm like the the first thing the game does is give you a fighter companion I don't, I don't know what the heck so um, in Dungeons and Dragons five e rules movement and actions are separated so you can move quite a ways and then you can do some things everybody has let's see that you start out with a ranged weapon so. I get my keyboards right oh, but here's there's some really cool things here okay I'm gonna do this uh, you can switch to your bow and then there's a dip bonus action coat your weapon in the surface to deal additional 
damage. It's a bonus action. It doesn't count as an attack. So I can dip my bow in this. And then I can make a ranged attack with my bow at 95% to hit this one because it's surprised. Or I can hit this one at 95% because it's also surprised. Wow. Awesome. Okay, I'm going to shoot this guy up here. That's cool. And now he's done. I don't have any more actions that I can do, so I end his turn. And then here's the little brain thing. <clears throat> and he has a lot of hit points. He's got 21. <clears throat> so I'm just going to move him up here. Melee and ranged weapons combat tutorial. Use melee weapons for enemies near you and a ranged weapon for enemies further away. Yes. So, can I get her... I can't get her over there to dip her sword, can I? <laughs> no, but we can do this. Put her right there. And she also starts with a bow and arrow as well. She's got 85 to hit, so we'll shoot him. And he takes a point of damage. And we'll end the turn for him. Now this thing's going to move. I'm going to sneak kind of over here. And then, oh yeah, and not enough speed left to do a jump. I could probably kill this guy at 90%. So he's dead, which is great. I'm going to end that guy's turn. This thing's going to come. If you throw one of those little bulbs, this is going to be great. Um, what do I want to do with you? Can I get it to jump up here? Target is too far. So if I move like to right here, still got enough speed. I could jump right there. I'm going to jump him up there and then I'm just going to sit in there. <clears throat> this thing's going to come over this way. Okay. And he misses, and she's going to switch to her sword. You get an attack of opportunities if, if she tries to move past him, but I want her to dip the sword in there. I love this whole dipping thing. This is cool. It's like, yes, yes. <laughs> Nachos and dipping sauce, baby. So we can make a main hand and attack on this guy at 95% to hit. She'll do an extra bit of damage because of the fire kills him dead. Um, in fact, we can have her then position herself closer to this guy. I could run right up there. Is that going to be enough? That might be enough room. I'm going to switch. I'm going to dip my weapon in there. I'm going to attack this guy. Yeah. That's three out of six damage, so then I'm done. Oh, he did a point of damage to me. My little hopper can't jump that far, but he can jump down. I'm just going to have him jump over there. Um, I think I might just have her shoot from where she's at. I should have probably dipped her arrow first. He can jump, so let's see, where can he jump to? Can he attack from there if he does it? Let's see. Oh, this is so fantastic. Oh my gosh, he gets a little height advantage there. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, very cool. Long sword. Cool. Right. <clears throat> so we're going to go loot our dead enemies here. Oh, there's combat nearby. Okay. Intellect devour. Nothing to take. Intellect devour. The first time I started playing through this game, that one over here had a crossbow, and I tossed, I tossed a caustic bulb, and it catches on fire, and it blows this whole area up. It nuked him hard. So. Healing potion. That's fantastic. Is there anything else over here? I don't think so. Oh, these guys up here. I need to go get all of them. 
There we go. Grab his stuff. Perfect. I like that you can jump. I'm sure everybody does. It's very... It's just... It's just one of those little added things to the game that makes it better. Now, the Nautiloid tank... What is this? Weighs 25 kilograms. Value is 1. Health is 1. Keep time with your own breath. Hmm. So I don't know what it's for, actually. I have no idea. I'm going to touch this thing. Oh, jeez. There's a dead guy over there. Let's go this way. So this is a big old battle up here, which is fun. I haven't played super far into this game yet, but I figured before I got too far, I should probably... I had at least one person saying, do a Let's Play, so here we are. Dragons. Very cool stuff. Get a little cutscene action here. A thrall. Oh, it has a short bow. As always, you want to loot, loot, loot. Let's see. What's going on here? More loot. Knives. Oh, a thrall caretaker. The problem is... Hmm. Can I jump over there? Do they have anything worth grabbing? My. Oh, he's going to get a little... Oh, he's got a bunch of stuff. Well, that was a good reason to jump. Wow, bonus action. Bonus action. Mugwort bundle. Huh. Our mind. An eldritch brain. Alive and in perfect condition. Suspended in cerebral spinal fluid. Wow. Well, heck yeah. So they wanted, they definitely wanted you to like do this. They made it worthwhile. They're like, oh yeah, we want you to jump. So make use of your jumping skills. Part of what makes the part of what has always made the Baldur's Gate games great is the companions, and so I'm really looking forward to seeing how these companions uh, turn out. So this is interesting. Look, I'm sure you could go up this way by jumping instead of going up. I don't know that there's an advantage to doing so, other than just taking these stairs up, but still, it's Larian, and they're like, hey, if you want to go a different way, oh, and I'm a little, I'm a little, I'm a little beat up because of the fire, oh no, I've been smacked around, I wonder if there's a, oh, am I going to, Regain hit points? I don't think I regain hit points just standing around. So this is curious. I'm gonna go heal myself. Seems like it would be a foolish thing not to do. Alright, what about coming over here? Sometimes there's some camera angle things going on here. Yeah, okay, like this. Like right now I'm locked in and I can't get back out. I think they got a little bit of work to do with this engine still, but. To the home. You are 
needed to survive. All right, to the helm. Yes, the helm. Fine, to the helm. All right, and there's these people who are kind of like busy doing their own brainwashed little things because they're thralls. We're going to come over here and fight these guys. Oh, let's see, can we just... Wounded Imp. Nice. Stealth failed. All right. So it'll show you where he's going to move to and then jump. Not enough resources speed. That's funny. Huh. Oops. Uh, hold on. I'm going to click on me. I'm going to shoot this thing again. And then I'm going to move over here. Alright, now I'm going to go back to this guy. <coughs> he can't quite get up there, can he? Alright, we'll just move him. Oh, and he's going to miss my little brain head. Yes, take the shot. She hit a natural d20 and they showed the dice there briefly in the screen. It's pretty cool. So, back to being leader. Give me the loot. Oh, he's going to go that way around the fire. Okay, cool. Nothing to take. Hey. Oh, this person... Nothing there. Okay. And in we go. <clears throat> Getting into the next level of the ship here. And of course, the mini map is up here and it's customizable. You can uh, tell it to rotate or not rotate. Hey, switch. There we go. There we go. I like the way weapons are handled. You have a ranged weapon and a, a sword. If you're a fighter here, I dig that. Okay, now we get into some... Touch nothing without knowing its purpose. Wow. Okay. Another mystery. Another mystery. Arcana failed. Aggression. Aggression. Ooh. Who's this guy? The man isn't dead, but he's totally unresponsive. Totally unresponsive. And then, uh, oh, there's a backpack here. I have a couple things. There's an agate. time for stragglers stragglers hmm there's magic at work here but what kind arcana check rolled an 11 and it says warding runes the pod won't open unless they're destroyed how do we destroy the warding runes Try to disrupt the bright lines of magic with a touch. Are you satisfied? We need to go. Oh. Leave the one. The one must be left. Must be left. I can't free you. Wait. There can't be. There has to be another way. Please. It cannot be helped. Come. Safe if she stays. Safe if we go. <laughs> Mind flare pod. Just out of curiosity, I had to go look up and see if you can actually save that woman from that pod. And you cannot. There's an elaborate reliquary here that's locked. You need a key for that. It's a burnished necklace. There's a couple other things. Scrolls of False Life. There's a key for this, though. And the key is somewhere else. Let's see, where is this? This area here. 
Okay, no, this is not where we're going. Once inside, do as I say. We don't want to go in there yet. I'm going to go get this key. There's a little bit of loot in there. It's typical starting area. Well, it's not a typical starting area. It's the middle of an illithid mind flare ship. But it's, you know, starting area stuff where they're teaching you how to go about using the controls and messing with the game mind flare pod drained cleric this says could mean, anything. could mean anything you failed your arcana roll on it this person has the elaborate key which goes to the A key. For, what? for the reliquary we're gonna leave this thing alone Just gonna get the key and take off. Where was that thing again? Right. Uh, oh, right there. I'm standing right next to it. Elaborate relic. There we go. And so it gives you an onyx and some gold. All right. Let's go do this big old fight and get out of here. Get to the next stage of the game. Basically. And the game auto saves for you at certain checkpoints, which is always very nice. Most of these things here don't have loot. Cutscene happens. Commence battle. Okay, well. Here we go. That little guy. I'm gonna have him run up there. And I'm gonna end my turn. We're gonna have to fight some imps. Imps are always a good low level, first level enemy to have to fight. And then uh, she's gonna run up here. And she's gonna dip her weapon in there. She's gonna shoot it, guys. Heck yeah, an extra piece of fire damage. <coughs> and our biggest problem here is that the guy who's green is on our side, and he's not going to make it very long, so. Do I have. Target is too far away. Well, what if I. Oh, and I can't jump, so let's switch. Let's shoot that guy. Oh, I should have, I should have dipped my weapon first. That's all right. Now you get a fight. You can attack this thing. Ninety percent. Oh yeah, it's got the claws. All right. Head over here, little dude. It's gonna keep missing my guy. That's nice. He hit a point there. She's going to shoot. They're 85 and 85. Alright, shoot for the far one. Yeah, gas him. Okay, I'm going to end her turn. These two are going to fight. He misses and he does not. Alright, let's see. Dip this in here. Get myself a little fire. Oh yeah, awesome. Okay, I'm gonna move over here and end his turn. Can you attack him? You can. Take those claws and put them on him. All right. 
my assumption here is that we'll get more attacks if it's like if five edition rules or anything like the old D&D you get more attacks as you level up so we'll see if that's actually the case all right not enough movement all right end her turn these guys are still fighting so and <clears throat> trying to go up there and and help that guy fight is a really bad idea cuz you're just not going to you're not going to do anything. I'm going to jump. Let's see about looting these guys. All right. End his turn. You a little critter. Just going to run up there. She's got to get caught up. And, and this guy keeps missing. <laughs> Oh, and he missed. Oh, well. That's okay. Target is too far away. Oops, I keep doing that. Let's just roll right up here. Oh, and this starts the cutscene. Okay. More dragons. Hurry before they strike. Sometimes she talks and her mouth doesn't move. I noticed that with some of the characters. And I don't know what the situation is there with that. I don't know if that's a mistake in the code or if it's actually supposed to be that way. I gotta assume since it's early access that it's some kind of bug, so. Oh, she missed it. Oh. Well, that's too bad. Okay, so brain bug. You can jump. What if you just jump there? And then run over here and claw this guy. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Alright. Critical miss? Well, that doesn't sound good for you. He's hurting this guy, for sure. Let's see, what has he got? Oh yeah, you can see it up here. 39 of 91, yeah. We don't, we don't want any of that to happen. So. I'm gonna run up here and jump. Boing! Get myself a little... Okay. I have cleave, which isn't quite... I don't think that'll get both of those guys, so I'm just going to try to attack this one guy. Main hand attack. Alright, he's out of movement. That thing's going to back up. If you got the little brain bug with you here, your little brain doggy. So that's some kind of hazard right there. I wonder what that does. I'm not sure I want to find out. Oh, I like the claws though. Okay, and now where's she at? She's there. Move as far up as you can. And shoot this guy. Oh, you missed. Wow. I thought she had pretty high chance. Another critical miss from this dude. Oh, he's gonna he's gonna die before we can get up here. Oh, it only took one hit point off of him. Wow. Okay. Uh, brain bug. It's your job. There you go. You got him. Okay. Now. I don't think you're allowed to work that. We're gonna move her up here. What do we have over here? Can't be moved. Out of movement. Alright. Oh, he finally did some damage to that guy. First time I tried to. First time through this little intro part here, I actually tried to come over here and start backstabbing this guy, and uh, he's got a ton of hit points, and it ended up being not a very good decision. 
You've made it. Yes. Pluck the bowstring. Pluck it. Boing. And so now there's a long loading sequence here as they get you to your destination. So that basically is the end of what I'd call kind of like the prologue or the intro. And then you end up familiar for Divinity Original Sin 2 people on a beach. <laughs> I think that's Larian's thing, is to start games with you on a beach. You start the game on a beach in Divinity Original Sin 1 and in Divinity Original Sin 2. And now in Baldur's Gate 3. Although, to be fair, you don't really start the game on a beach. You start in this very neat Illithid, Mind Flare, Githyanki, Dragons beginning. And I just think a huge reason they've done that is to to give it that Dungeons and Dragons feel. So I gotta say I'm pretty impressed with it so far. And I think if you played any sort of Divinity Original Sin ga game, you're gonna be familiar with their combat system and their mechanics and it's, it's gonna make you feel right at home. Oh no. Yeah, there's a little bit of... You can see the textures coming in there. I noticed that the first time I was playing it, too. There's a little bit of uh, lag there on some of the textures loading in. I'm not quite sure why that is. So you can see it there on those. Yeah. It looks great once the textures load in. I don't know why they're slow getting in, though. I love their character models, though. Oh, my goodness. Mr. Mind Flare. Oh, he got smacked by a rock. And then, because you are the protagonist, something saves you. Some kind of magical, mystical force. You get a soft landing. So here's where things really kind of start. The adventure starts. The adventure begins. And this is where things start to also feel a little bit uh, familiar for Divinity players. Where here we are on a beach. And uh, we can start running around and, and exploring the place and trying to figure out what the heck's going on. So I'm going to end the episode here. We'll take off on the second episode at this spot. But... It's a it's a pretty great intro as far as role playing games go. I mean, geez, you got Illithids, Mind Flayers, Dragons, Githyanki, uh, all at the start here, and I think Larian doing a pretty fantastic job of trying to set you up to say, yes, it's Feyrun, it's Dungeons and Dragons, it's not Divinity Original Sin, even though a lot of things are going to feel and look familiar for Larian players. I'm pretty jacked. I'm excited to see where this goes. We'll play this out. The first act of the game is what's available in early access here. And Larian has already said, don't really expect the game for at least a year. It'll be ready when it's ready, which is the old Blizzard mantra when they were first building Diablo. It was, when is the game going to be ready? It'll be ready when it's ready. And I've always thought that's the correct way to build game software. 
Um, I like that they've given us early access, though, especially for fans like me who've been playing Baldur's Gate my entire life. I'm a giant Baldur's Gate fan. I'm, I'm going to miss not having Minsk and Boo and Emelin and Jahira and some of the more uh, memorable characters from those games. Viconia, Edwin. I'm going to miss that, but I'm excited to see what these new characters are like and uh, get to know their personalities and I'm really excited about this new world that the old infinity engine is so old and pixelated it's to a degree it's hard for me to enjoy even playing Baldur's Gate 1 or 2 anymore because the games are just so old uh, this is this is fantastic and when Larian announced that they had the rights to build this game I was just going to be I was so excited because uh, Baldur's Gate 1 and 2 is hands down my favorite role-playing game franchise as much as i love divinity original sin one and two and i think the mechanics are fantastic and i love playing those games and i love the turn-based combat N nothing for me beats Baldur's gate uh, nothing beats minsk and boo and nothing beats those worlds and it's just part of that is nostalgia but part of that is they were just fun and they were awesome so i'm excited to see where larian takes this Thanks for watching, folks. As always, first episode, dig it. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. If you dig the channel, subscribe. If you have a question or comment, drop it down below. My Patreon's listed in the description below if you want to throw a few coins my way. That's always appreciated. It helps support me and this channel and doing these videos and, more importantly, doing some of my tutorials and things like that. So let's take this for a ride, shall we? Larian, Baldur's Gate 3. Thanks, folks. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.